Hi, my name's Julian Leach from the Australian Association of Practice Management. You're watching Six Degrees of Association with Sarah and Andrew. Hello and welcome to Season 2 of Six Degrees of Association, the world's first web TV show dedicated to the pursuit of association success. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I'm from Redback Conferencing and I'd like to welcome my co-host Andrew McCullum from the Association of Corporate Council Australia. How are you? Good Sarah, good. How we made you? it back for a second season. I know and good to be here and good to, good to have the Brains Trust here alone I think. Let's face it, we've dropped off a bit of dead wood from the last series yes. but uh, all, all go forward from here I think. Yes, as you can see, um, our third person, Rob Barnes, has decided to leave due to some other commitments. However, we still it's have an amazing... Yeah, it is, let's and be the, honest. Uh, it's yeah. not the audience. And we're changing up the logo and we're doing a few things, so mm. stay tuned. Mm -hmm. um, we've got some more exciting things coming up, so definitely still going to be an exciting TV series that's going to enlighten us all. A bit more highbrow too, I think, this series. Yeah, so. I think too. Very I important. think so. Um, and we are changing it up, like we said. So we're now going to be joined by a special guest from this sector every single fortnight. So today we're actually joined by Gillian Leach from the Australian Association of Practice Management. How are you today? I'm very well. Thank you, Sarah and Andrew. Oh, Thank thanks you. For you. Thanks for replacing Rob too. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so, As we said, more highbrow. So yeah, we've done well. exactly. <laughs> now we're going to get started um, straight on to one of our most popular segments from last year, and that is thumbs up, thumbs down. So this time you get to start first because <laughs> I've got no other choice. How good's that? Uh, thumbs up is a, is a segment where we actually talk about an association or something in the industry that has really inspired us or got us thinking, wow, that's a good job. What's your thumbs up? Thanks, Sarah. Well, it's no secret I am a Queenslander at heart, and though I oh, have, here we go. <laughs> I have I have relocated to uh, down south here, but um, I'm going to go happily refer back to my native state of Queensland and give a big shout out and a thumbs up to Volunteering Queensland. Um, they have a fantastic website. Volunteering Queensland is an organisation that exists to promote mm -hmm. volunteering to ensure there's maximum uh, economic benefit from the volunteering sector in Queensland and. You go to their website and it's volunteeringqld.org.au and they've got an amazing array of resources around training volunteers, around building a community or a not-for-profit organisation, about governance procedures, mm. about how to get, recruit, train and really get the most out of volunteers for your organisation. So, tremendous website, volunteeringqld.org.au, a big thumbs up to that organisation and uh, the tremendous uh, resource that they've put online. Great. I think because so many associations out there do struggle with the whole volunteering mm. side as well. So yeah. definitely one that should be followed. Mm. One to look for. But with a positive, there's also something. <laughs> there is a negative. And yet, look, I am a hard marker. Yep. Um, but regular readers of the Associations Now blog will be well aware that Joe Romanecki uh, recently left that blog and to take up a position with the Entomological Society of America. What? They could, they could feature in another section of this show. Um, but what for a number of years... I don't know, they <laughs> represent bugs, I guess. Okay. Um, but for a number of years, Joel wrote a fantastic weekly blog on that uh, around membership, you know, mm -hmm. highlighting great practices in membership, successful membership recruitment. Um, and it was a weekly blog, and again, not just me, but a lot of people in the association space followed it very closely. And, and though the blog continues, albeit with a different author, mm -hmm. and obviously, look, Joel's a good guy, we wish him nothing but the best. Um, representing America's insects over educating the membership professionals in the association space. Deserves a reluctant thumbs down from me this week. Each to their own. Mm. So now the beauty of this season is I get to do my own thumbs up, mm. thumbs down. Here so can you introduce me? Sure, Sarah. <laughs> um, What's your thumbs up this week? Okay, thanks for asking, Andrew. Um, I would like to give a big thumbs up to the International Convention Centre in Sydney. So that's mm. just newly opened, or reopened, should I say, the old Sydney Convention Centre. So it's now the ICC, and I've heard so much feedback from associations looking there, going through, figuring out what they're going to do for their conferences this year. I even know someone who's working there now, yeah. and it is state of the art, and I think Finally, there's this massive venue in Sydney, and Sydney's always been a great venue, especially when it comes to conferences, but now there's somewhere that is just 
phenomenal. So I'm just going to run through some of the stats sure. because it's not just my point of view, it's actually facts. Okay. So here's just some um, stats with their premier venue that they've opened. So you've got 35,000 square metres of upper and lower deck. So that's actually the size of 26 Olympic pools combined. And that's exhibition space. Yes, yeah. exactly. And wow. that's huge. That is, that's 8,000 seat plenary. Mm -hmm. So you can have people, especially when you talk about international associations as well, bringing them to Australia and then you sort of, you've got this whole international association network which is just going to, not, it's going to benefit us essentially. State of the art technology, of course, because they have to. I've heard the food and the kitchen is going to be phenomenal. And then they've also got a 5,000 square metre open air event deck to have your events outside as well. Oh. So um, it's going to be the largest multi-point boardroom in Australia as well and I did some research and in 2015 I didn't actually know that Sydney was named Australia's leading destination for conferences and that's by the Union of International Associations. What year was that, sorry? 2015. 2015. Yeah. It's so, hard to believe, isn't it? Well, Sydney. Queensland, Melbourne, you know, you keep moving around but, you know, Sydney's a place to be. Clearly. Mm, mm. That's my thumbs up. That's so if you haven't been there, no doubt you're going to be attending a conference there very soon or you should definitely check it out. Thumbs down. Shouldn't be pumping Sydney. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and uh, thanks, Sarah. And uh, your thumbs down for the week. Okay. So you know me and I don't like to get into feminism too much. However, there's always a however, um, there was a recent article that was released titled All Male Boards Revealed. Mm -hmm. So this highlighted um, this and this was based in New Zealand um, with a lot of their businesses. And I just want to give a thumbs down or maybe just open our eyes to organisations out there that still haven't moved forward. And I feel like we have in some regard, but not enough when it does come to boards. And the Institute of Directors has actually come out and described the latest figures as shocking and clearly not good enough. So there's a bit of thumbs up because they are wanting to do something. And, you know, I get that it is historic and you can't just remove board members based on their sex and then invite women to join. But I just think in this day and age, we can do better. And I think as a yeah. whole, as a community, we need to start talking about it more and we need to try and find a way to some, come to some common ground. Like I said, don't remove all the men. I'm not, I'm not burning my bra or anything no. like that. I'm just <laughs> out there to say, um, you know, let's start talking about it. Let's try to do something about it. Um, but also congratulations to a lot of associations out there who actually do mm. have quite a good split. So there's my thumbs up. Yeah, no, and a great point. And I think the association sector really has the opportunity and, and, and often does take a lead in mm. promoting diversity at board level. So Take it one step further. Um, yeah, so uh, a worthy thumbs down from you and a worthy issue to raise. Oh, I'm glad I impressed you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaking of thumbs up, let's mm. get back to our special guest today, for today, Gillian. Welcome. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here today. Yeah, we know you've been hanging out <laughs> since last season, but we finally got you on board. Um, so, we just want to have a quick chat with you, um, just based on what you're doing within your organisation, what you're planning to do in the future, and I'll hand it over to Andrew. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, let's start off. Tell mm. us a bit about the Australian Association of Practice Management. Right. Well, as the name says, we look after practice managers and the role of practice management in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. So our members are involved in practice management in general practice, dental, specialist and allied health professions. We do also have members in community health and hospital clinics. So we cover a fairly wide spectrum, but mainly in the private sector. Yeah. Um, so our, the aim is to make practice management very efficient and effective so that the health professionals can look after the patients without worrying about is the computer working today, mm. um, are the staff rosters right, is the, house, is the practice clean enough. So our aim is to give our members all the information they mm. need to run the practice efficiently and let the health professionals and medical professionals get on with the job of caring for the patient. Wow. Fantastic. And I guess we're still quite early in 2017, so mm -hmm. you know, what are the big issues facing the AAPN for the coming year? What are, you, what are your members saying, you know, Gillian, this is what we need to, need to get some action Yeah, on. there's a, a huge amount of change going on in the health industry at mm -hmm. the moment. Um, it seems to be more than usual, but mm -hmm. I think change is always happening to us. Um, I guess the main big things are the Medicare freeze for on mm. general practice, Medicare mm. rebate freeze, which means their income is basically static. So GPs are looking for other ways to raise income to meet the rising costs 
and the practice manager has a huge role in making sure that the business is sustainable so that we can provide health care to the Australian community. Mm. Um, the other big issues are changes in government policy. So we've got a program called Healthcare Homes coming out where the funding model for um, patients with chronic disease will be quite different. So that's going to need quite a different change in the management set up to look after that funding and mm. to make sure the patients are getting even better care than they were before, mm. which um, we think is a possibility. Um, technology is another area, and I know mm. we'll, perhaps we'll cover that a bit in more detail yeah, later, but I'm it's really, um, the technological changes are incredible. I think it's mm. just fascinating because um, I spoke to you mm. last week um, before the mm. show and I was mentioning how I saw on the project um, they were talking about Dr Google and I was just thinking that is one element of something that must disrupt your industry or must cause some sort of um, you know domino effect or make people think god what is happening so how is technology actually playing a role within your members and mm. that sphere but also within the industry? Um, well there's several, several different levels so mm the technology is impacting on the management of the practice. Yep. So we have um, appointments online, we have che uh, self-service check-in kiosks in coming into mm. doctor's practices, so you, you don't have to line up in front of the receptionist anymore. Wow. Um, we have a lot of e-health um, mm -hmm. records, so practice management software systems to make sure that all the data is kept for each patient in a regulated way. Um, and the My Health Record, which means that uh, information can be shared amongst the whole health care team, the specialists, the hospital, the allied health professionals, as well as the general practice. Um, what we don't have yet, and what we're really pushing for, is interop interoperability in the messaging system so that the systems can talk to each other yeah. and that's a real issue that we're pushing for at the moment. So um, when the doctor sends a referral to the specialist they can receive it and read it. Um, they'll get discharge summaries from the hospitals. Mm. The medication records can be read by anyone wherever they are in Australia which is really important because we do travel quite a bit mm. in Australia yes. and uh, you do often need to visit a different doctor. Yeah. yeah. Um, but on the other side, on, there's some really exciting changes. Um, we've got telehealth where mm. people in remote areas can consult a specialist at some distance. Um, we also have wearable technology which is coming in, so uh, blood pressure, blood sugar levels, things like that um, can be measured. So it's up to the practice manager to be aware of that and have the systems that can handle the data, mm. set up the systems that will alert the doctor when something's going wrong. So a huge amount of change in wow. technology and, and very disruptive. It's mm. all up to you to commute to help your members try yes. and adapt to this. I can imagine mm. 2017 is just going to be crazy. Yes, yes. <laughs> We've got a big job. Um, so we make sure that that industry information is getting out to our mm. members on a very regular basis. Yep. Um, we send email alerts to them every time we see something mm. new happening in the, in the field. Uh, we also have a huge number of resources on our website yep. so that th our members can access those. Um, and we've been working with Redback a lot too oh, to um, <laughs> <laughs> provide regular e-seminars yeah. mm. uh, to our members on topical issues. So once a month we'll have an e-seminar mm. on an issue that's very important to our members. Great. And it's a great way. Mm. Um, they're very busy people. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them don't live near a city, so it's a really great way of getting our education out nationally. To them. Yeah. Great. And what is your website? What is the... It's aapm.org.au. Okay. And, and I understand you've been with AAPM for coming up to f towards five years now. Mm. Yes. I guess <laughs> one thing always, so if, if not, not putting a time frame on your, on your tenure there, but... What, what do you see the association being, if do you see it in, you've talked about the change and the technology, mm. if we go three years or five years ahead, how will AAPM be different in terms of how you're delivering services for your members, how, you're, how the association itself is structured? Yes, um, well we're a national organisation and we have one office in Melbourne mm. which looks after the whole country and we have a fantastic um, 
group of volunteers in each state that help us to um, really work with the members on the ground level. So um, communication is essential to us and mm -hmm. I think technology is going to enable that um, even more. So everyone's using their smartphones now, mm. not, not mm. just sitting at the compu computer looking at yep. data. Um, we'll be much more mobile data oriented, um, having resources available in people's hands. Mm. Um, we'll be, we are more of a national organisation so that we're providing a unified education platform right across mm. Australia so everybody has got access to similar resources, um, similar, edu similar education opportunities. Um, the other area is that the practice manager job is becoming so much more complex with the constant change. There's something like 254 different pieces of legislation wow. that the practice manager has to be aware of and comply <laughs> with. So you can see the that... The job in itself. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, that's why you have the practice manager and the doctor yeah. and health professional can't possibly keep yeah. up with all that um, if they're going to concentrate on patient care. Mm. So our practice managers will need to have a lot higher education and more constant education to keep up with the changes. Mm. Um, so it's very important that we are able to supply that. Um, we see the practice manager leading change a lot more in terms of setting up systems that will enable different ways to care for patients. So. Um, the remote technology can be used efficiently. Mm -hmm. um, people won't possibly have to visit the doctor every time they mm. have something wrong with them. A telephone consultation will possibly suffice. So that will make the doctors a lot more efficient. Yeah. Um, the use of nurses and allied health in the healthcare team will increase. Um, and it's up to the practice manager to be able to manage that team and make sure that they're all communicating mm. effectively for the benefit of the patient. So much innovation happening. Mm -hmm. so sounds like you've got a lot on your hands. Yeah. We have. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're across it though, which is good. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, it makes, yeah, makes, I feel like there's a lot of organisations out there that are just too scared to take that leap and the word technology and innovation can scare so many. So it's actually good to chat with you and you're working with these practice managers to make sure that everything's mm. happening and they are educated. So like you said, the end goal is that patient care, which I think we all like to, we all hope happens. Yes. <laughs> it's well, a positive it for everyone because <laughs> yes. we all get sick. So um, just a final question from me um, and Andrew mentioned um, how long you've been within AAPM but you've been in the sector for a while as well. So mm. what do you find most satisfying about working in the association sector and I think given that you've had corporate experience in the past as well, personally what gets you out of bed every morning with a smile on your face? I Guessing that you do of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Yes. Uh, it's very exciting looking at the changes mm. that are happening, um, well, in all associations um, and particularly in healthcare. And the importance of the role of the practice manager in the association I'm in now is growing mm. tremendously. So it's very exciting to give our members the resources that are going to empower them to lead their practices and make their groups into teams that can mm. really provide great care for mm. the community. So right. we have practice managers putting in programs that uh, prevent chronic disease in the community mm. um, and doing amazing things. And that's really exciting. Yeah, mm. definitely. Thank you. It's great to hear a little bit more about mm. your membership base and also what you're doing as an organisation to thank assist you. them. So thank you. Thank you. We'd like to have you stay because I think you're probably going to be just as excited as we are for the next section. So this <laughs> is are. one se uh, segment that we've kept um, and this is Andrew's baby and this is there really is an association for everything and as we discovered last season there really is. Mm. So this is where for, is. The, for those newbies out there where Andrew goes out, we send him on a task, go and find an obscure association that no one really knows about anywhere in the world, report back to us and drum roll. I can't really do the drums, but you get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that very worthy introduction. And uh, gee, it's good to be back. Yeah. And doubly so for the simply named Balloon Council. Wow. <laughs> who I'm delighted to feature this week. TBC, as I like to call them, is an organisation based in Trenton, New Jersey, consisting of retailers, distributors and manufacturers within the balloon sector. 
Uh, the organisation date, dates back to 1990 when they were formed with the very important purpose of educating consumers and regulators about the wonders of foil and latex balloons and their proper handling. So it's not um, hot air balloons? There's no hot air here, Sarah, no. Are you sure? Um, <laughs> TBC has a serious side because at that time, 1990, the association was formed when several, at a time when several state legislatures were considering the implementation of a range of laws that would have severely limited consumer rights to obtain full enjoyment from balloons. So there you have it, uh, TBC. Mind blowing. Um, they do encourage people to uh, get involved in the Balloon Council to ensure and affirm America's ongoing love affair with balloons. Hmm. You couldn't make that up. So what do you think it, of that one, Julia? Fascinating. It Fascinating. is, Fascinating. isn't it? <laughs> Um, so this is a two minute warning, so mm -hmm. ding ding, spider squeeze, uh, we don't really have one at the moment but uh, we will <laughs> get you. one. Um, so this is where uh, on the show we actually talk about or we're accountable really for what happened last time, what possibly could happen. We encourage you to actually get online and uh, on Twitter, hashtag 60A or send us an email, contact us through whatever channel you can find us I guess. That's how it works, isn't it? Yeah. Um, any good, any bad feedback, or if you would like to get involved, then please let us know. Um, we don't have any yet, except, you know, everyone's talking about how great last year was, they're yeah. lining up. Uh, we do have a sponsor though, Ozae. So um, this show is now sponsored by them. So oh, welcome fantastic. aboard, Ozae. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and anything you need to add to that? Yeah, look, we do have one uh, tweet so far from an R. Barnes who's um, said, can I have my show back, please? Um, but I will go. But I will give a shout out to a gentleman, Omar Soka, who uh, recently released a book called *The Future of Associations*. We public, we authors need to stick together. Mm. Um, but in all seriousness, it is a great read, and, and I'd highly encourage all associations professionals to. <laughs> I'm talking. <laughs> we really encourage all association professionals to have a look at this book. It yeah. um, really does talk a bit about the future of associations, how to embrace disruption, how to, you know, what will the member of the future need from a professional association. So the future of associations, a good read and I apologise for going off script slightly. That's okay. All right. Yep. Always next time. <laughs> That's a wrap for episode one of season two of Six Degrees of Association. I'd like to thank our guest for today, Julian. Thank you, thank thank you, you very Julian. much for coming in. Pleasure. We also encourage you to join our online community at associations.org and to share your views with the entire associations world. Thank you, Andrew, for joining me once again. Thank you, Sarah. I think we did all right. Yeah, yeah. I think so. We don't need the third wheel anyway, do we? <laughs> and, and it was a third. We were carrying it. Yeah, let's yeah, be let's be honest. Mm. Um, to all our 60A viewers, thank you very much and remember too much conversation i forget the rest of the quote but kills a chat kills a chat starts a chat something like that anyway keep chatting keep talking and we'll see you next time on 60a bye for now